guys, it's Diddy Kwong Racing here. Today we're going to be doing a swap out of a stock Z1 controller and battery to a 48 volt with a new controller that has an LCD screen so you can monitor all your statistics and usage. We'll be visiting at Vinyl by Bobby and his shop to see how the process is going. Oh look, there's Bobby. We walked in on him soldering. As many of you know, Bobby was one of the first to mod the Z1 with the 48 volt in-seat battery mod with controller upgrade. In early 2019, we opened my bike and the rest was history. Since then, we've had lots of bikes in and out of the shop and had lots of time to learn. Some of the findings included mounting the controller to the outside of the seat. This allows for increased airflow and reduces cutouts. The decision to do this did not come easily. However, after installing several inside the seat, we've noticed that they begin to overheat after extended use. The overheating was very apparent on riders over 200 pounds, so we needed to make the modification to my bike as well. In order to store the controller under the seat flush, we needed to make some modifications. We started off by cutting the fender brackets to shorten how tall the fender was. Then we had to grind them down to get them back into the original shape that they came in. Next, we drilled the holes into the bracket so that they could be mounted back onto the frame. After you finish drilling the first bracket, line up the second bracket and then scribe the second bracket so that you drill at the exact same point. Now that the brackets are shortened, it's time to get the fender back on the bike. You can immediately see that the fender is now hugging the wheel. We then install the new battery inside the seat after the controller is mounted. And this new battery is a 48 volt. It has a special BMS system that's Bluetooth that allows the phone to connect to the battery so that you can monitor each cell respectively. In addition to that, you're able to lock down the battery so that nobody can turn the bike on until the battery is unlocked again via the phone app. Next, we'll add a layer of fish paper over the battery to add an additional layer of water resistance and insulation. And then to finish it off, we'll be putting the battery in a heat shrink wrap and shrinking it down to size. But for now, for testing purposes, we'll put it back in the seat. Now that our bike's back together, let's hear more about the BMS and the app. So with this um, BMS installed into the battery, uh, it gives you all your values, uh, your max charge rate where the BMS cuts out. Um, your cutoffs and also tells you the amount of cycles that the battery has. So since this is a brand new battery, zero cycles on it so far. Real useful app. Can you show us the cutoff again? So that, I'm sorry, those are all the battery cells that you can monitor separately? Yeah, this is um, each, each individual group. So if you have one group that's way off, um, you know that it's a problem with that group and nothing else. And to, uh, if you ever decide that you want to lock it, you can kill the battery so that nobody can use it. You hit this button here and then observe the display shuts off. And then what happens if you try to start the bike while the battery is locked? It won't. The bike will not turn on. So now I hit the unlock button again. And the display comes back on. Awesome. We also added a hinge and Velcro to the seat to make things more accessible. An added layer of insulation helps to keep the battery dry. Because we have the controller under the seat, we had to extend some wires. To protect the wires, we created a waterproof cover with Velcro fastening. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. For more info about this and other builds, reach out to @vinylbybobby on Instagram.